this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey everybody, hey, I'm glad you're back. We sitting there, this is part B of what we did on session one on the 22nd of March. I hope you enjoy part A. And man, I'm just more excited even going forward in, in part B. Now, this part we're talking about, the fact is that, that I was telling you about people saying they go to social events and so forth and, 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 and that there's both sides that sit there and try to put you down, really. <laughs> The, 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 I guess the worldly people, the, the, the people we call maybe sinners and so forth, they're trying to pressure you to come in and act in the way they want you to act. You know, they want you to act, I guess, crazy and, 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 and just pull you away from the Lord altogether and say, no, that's how it is, man, because here you have fun. And then you got the people in the church that's in there that even associate with some of those people that we call uh, kind of unruly. They want to sit there and put you down too and say, man, you, you, you ain't saying you hang with those crazy people. Huh? And it's, it just, to me, I just find it very uh, disturbing because it really does impact the effectiveness of witnessing to people. Amen? And also have the saints to grow and mature because we sit there and we want to put people in a box. And I'm telling you that it's not a box that the church belongs into. The church is supposed to go preach the gospel to the world. Amen? So one of the scriptures we, we uh, start off with on this side in part B is uh, this is Matthew's chapter 11. And you get a chance to look it up and chew on and meditate on it for yourself. But it says here, this is Jesus talking. It's in the red. <laughs> it says here in Matthew 11:18. For John came, neither eating nor drinking. Now, you know he had food, but so he's not talking about uh, what a man has some food, but he had locusts and honey and stuff like that. Nor drinking, and they ain't talking about drinking water, because you can't survive without drinking water. So they're talking about drinking alcoholic beverages. And they say he has a devil. Now, I mean, that's a trip. <laughs> now, <laughs> And that's how some of the people like this at the club and party, you know, all that stuff, and, and they hang out in the club and all that and, and do all kinds of crazy things, I guess, in the crap tables and all that stuff. They sit there and look at you like you're crazy. Man, I'm ain't crazy. But, you know, but at the same time, they want you to be that way because they want to call you crazy. They want to sit there and say, uh, you, you, you don't want to be doing the stuff where you don't want to be drinking no liquor or no nothing like that. You must be just like John the Baptist, so we can look at you and say, you're strange. Hmm, interesting. So that's, the, that's to me, I said, that's the, the world way of coming at you. And then to look at the other one in verse 19, the Son of Man came neither eating, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, all right? That means the hot wings, pizzas, and all that stuff. And drinking the beer, the wine, or whatever. But most kids were drinking wine back in those days, but it's alcohol beverages. And they said, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibbler, huh? A friend of publicans and sinners. But Jesus said, But wisdom is justified of her children. I mean, it's not what I'm taking on the in outside. In my fact, you heard this script before. It's not what goes on the from the outside what comes from the inside of man that defiles the man. Amen? So just remember that as we go into this sec this portion of the uh, Bible study is that God is loving you and he's not trying to put you in such a box that you can't enjoy your life. And God is telling the saint, look, we got to go out and reach these people, snatch these people from the fire. And you said that you can't be scared about who you associate with. You need to be able to say, that I'm associating with Jesus. I'm ministering the gospel. I'm not Bible thumping them. I'm letting them know I can live and enjoy myself. Amen? But at the same time, I want to know Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. I think you should never be embarrassed about that. Nor allow people who don't do those type of things to try to ostracize you. You need to go ahead and just walk in the, in the glory of God, man. And say, look, I ain't got to do the stuff you're doing. I ain't got to slap somebody on the refrigerator. I ain't got to sit there and drink until I get so drunk, don't know how to happen. But yeah, I can still party. I can still dance. 
just like you. Hey, but I don't have to be under restraints. I'm free from that laws and ordinance of man. You are too. Enjoy yourself. And so that's why I'm excited about the gospel. It's easy. <laughs> I ain't got to sit there and play ordinance of man or whatever. I just need to go ahead and trust in the Lord. So I hope you enjoyed this part, part B. I got a part C and I even got a part D. And I'll be glad to sit there and put those together and send them out as well. Hey, God bless you. And keep your prayer. Watch out for that virus. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye. He said, I ain't supposed to have a good time. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be straight laced, goody two shoes, you know, and uh, like suffering all the time. Right. You know, because life, like I said, life ain't supposed to be fun if you're a Christian. See what I'm saying? Th that's the image they put out. Exactly. And that's why I'm trying to want to address today is that people sit there, if we, they, they, I, I remember one time when, uh, when I was back at, uh, I think I went to a TDY with somebody and the guy went into the bar. Right, and 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 uh, so I went in and with them, and it was just a hotel, just a hotel bar, and and the guy was asking, her, you know, at that time I wasn't drinking beer or anything, right? I was going to World Changes, and, and we 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 decided we weren't going to drink, and uh, the guy said, "Well, why aren't you drinking?" And I said, "The problem is because when I drink, if I'm sitting there talking about the word or fellowship about the word, you're looking more at the beer in my hand." Didn't you listen to what I had to say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yes, sir. so, I mean, it's like, if it's like, cast 22. If I sit there and don't drink, you, you, you tripping out on me saying I got some issues. And then if I do drink, you sit and say I got some issues. And yes, that's, sir. this is exactly what Jesus said. Look at this. The son of man, verse 19, Chris, look at it. The son of man came eating hot wings. <laughs> drank, drank it, drinking the beer or drinking the wine. I know he drank the wine. And they said, look at this. Behold, a man gluttonous and wine bibbler. Now, that ain't grape juice. That's another thing. You had, you had sex and they said, well, you know, when somebody said, well, Jesus drank wine. No, no, he drank some good pure grape juice. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And then, apparently. Yeah, I ain't gonna waste them. I ain't gonna waste them grapes for no grape juice. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but, but see, and, it's, and that's, that's a trip because you got some people to sit there on our religious side, Chris, that they, they want to sit there and say, I can't accept that he was drinking wine. Uh huh. Uh, no, no. He, he drank some pure. He, you know, when he made that, when he made that wine for that wedding, that that he said he made a pure wine that that had to be like grape juice. Now, oh yeah. I don't know about y'all, huh? I was gonna say they ain't had none that good since. <laughs> all I know is. All I know is when that governor tastes that wine, Chris, I guarantee you, if he had drank some grape juice, he would have been very upset. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Because he oh, would have yeah. sit there and said, he said, he could, the man says, like, most cases, you put the bad wine out first so you get drunk. So when I put out the good wine, <laughs> or wait, no, excuse me, say, you, put out, you, you put out the good wine first, and then when they get drunk, you go ahead and just give out the bad wine so yeah, so yeah. so apparently yeah. so apparently brother jackson the good wine you 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 get drunk with but but if you go by some of our religious people it was grape juice and and i mm. guarantee i even got some grape juice right here i can drink this <laughs> all day long <laughs> and i won't get drunk i won't even get tipsy not not with that grape yeah. juice. But mm -hmm. so so put it like so but I'm saying you have heard have you ever ever heard that conversation before? Where they try to say that was not wine? Yes, sir. See, Brother Jackson, that that's that's Chris I'm talking about when you're talking about get a little phony a little bit. And that's why those mm -hmm. that's why the people in the club, if they see you drinking a wine or beer or liquor or scotch, 
They got they looking at you and say you're supposed to be drinking that. But but like you say, a lot of times most of that those things is restriction or those denominational restrictions that they put on everything. Yeah. You know, to include, you know, it, your woman's dress gotta be so long. She can't show this, she can't do that. All this other stuff, you know, you, you can't eat this on this day, you can't do that. Those are man's restrictions. Cause mm -hmm. like I said, according to the law, it wasn't but ten commandments. Exactly. So why y'all adding to them? <laughs> and he like say, and we ain't even living with the law right now. Come on. You didn't have ten. Why am I gonna add fifty five more just because I wanna differentiate myself from all the other men because I'm better than you because I can do this. See? Exactly. That <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. And I wanna get into that because that's that's what I that last video, I don't think you've seen it yet. I said now that's what I was talking about is is two groups. Both groups seem to try to put you out of the church. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Canel, if you don't do it their way, they get a problem. And like I said, that's why verse 19, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibbler, bibbler a friend of look. Now, now they got a problem. You, you got friends as in the club. Huh? Yep. Hey, you you, you, you got you got you got atheists. Oh, we can't deal with you. Oh, you 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 deal. You hang with the wrong people. That's it. That's now, it right there. There's Jesus in there saying a friend of publican and sinners, but look what he said. But wisdom is justified by her children. Amen. I just want to let y'all know. So, so when y'all sit there and you, if you, if you, if you get the chance to fellowship with people in Legion or in the club or in the disco or any other place on the beach or on the party, you sit there and say, "Look, I don't know what you're trumping from, but if you read Matthew's chapter eleven, if I if I don't do the things that you're doing right now." You think I'm crazy? <laughs> uh -huh. I, I think I think really yes, good. it really it remind me of I think they want you to be like Urkel. Yes. Yes, you gotta be you gotta be the super nerd. You, you got, gotta be that super nerd. Exactly. And it don't mean no harm mm -hmm. uh whatever we're trying to portray, to me I'm saying the portrayal I should portray by the fact if you call us Christian, we'll be Christ like. That correct? Yes. That what it mean, Christ like. Well, what was he? What? What is nineteen talking about? What, what was nineteen talking about? This, this is Christ. Is this Christ talking? Yeah, but like you say, being normal. That's what it's talking about. Being normal. <laughs> like you say, take, take, taking the advantage of being a man, being, being a human being, being a human you being. You got to touch your earthly surroundings. Yes, you have to. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to say, man, we, we, he's trying to get us to understand. We try to live by these rules. We can't even keep the rules. We can't. I had a friend of mine yesterday. We sit there. We was talking. He was talking about the Egyptians and the, the historical laws and the great society that came from Africa. God bless. I'm with you. But the, their belief was they had 42 laws. And I told him, I said, well, little brother, you go for it. If you want the 42 laws. And because because we came up with it, our ancestors came up with it. You go for it. I'm trying yeah. to tell you, oh, yeah. I couldn't. I can't keep up with ten. Much less can I keep up with forty two laws. Amen. Amen. I need Jesus. Oh yeah. But the point of the other piece, like I can say, is that we got to be like Christ. Christ was Christ talked to everybody. He talked to the woman at the well, and they said, "They said, why are you talking mm -hmm. to that woman?" That was a Samaritan, and he was he was talking to her. Uh, and then, you know what, go ahead. The thing about um, that I see with people who try to uh, use this, I'm going to say, manipulation in this in this convoluted aspect of you know, in according to the law, not. Um, to me, that's the way that they use to also exalt themselves. Yeah. So, you know, hey, if I they I mean. Um, you know, going to the, the liquor store. And so now, chastise me, even if you don't even say something to me, but in your mind, you chastise me, exalt yourself. Yeah, exactly. So you say, hey, 
I would so now when I go to the liquor store, don't say nothing about me or even even if I don't go to the liquor store, it's still about them exalting um, themselves. Yeah, and, right. Then the other aspect is is why do we as as people continue to wanna like you said the forty two laws, you know, or these other laws. It's very interesting when when we have grace. Jesus, you know, God the Father has given us grace. Now, not to say that we can go out and do what we want to do, because a demonstration of who we are as Jesus is how we carry ourselves. But we want to go out and say, okay, now I'm going to live to these set of laws, or these set of laws, or these set of laws, and put that kind of restraint upon myself. Does that make sense? Nope. It, it does. And it's, it, uh, again, it's, it's the insanity, not just of the mind, but, you know, of, of, uh, of, of us being in the wrong spirit. Exactly. You know, we are not walking according to, we, we, we can't be walking according to the, the, the word of God. That's what we are focusing on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you take on Elder Johnson, Elder Johnson, how you doing, Elder Johnson? <laughs> Elder, <laughs> Elder had a time when he had, he was being a good, hey, he was being a good person and allowed somebody to, to, to stay with him. And it was the opposite sex. They was in a room, they was in the old room. But he caught all kinds of pressure yes, from sir. the church. Here is a uh, Sir, yes, sir. Okay. There is a, in that scripture, it appears that though it's saying that no matter how we approach you, you don't receive what we're saying. And a lot of times, I think that people look for a reason to discredit you so they don't have to adhere to the stuff that you, you're, you're sharing with them. Yeah. yeah. That's where, in this place, I think what Jesus was saying is that we, we piped to you and you would not dance <laughs> you were more to you you would not lament right so no matter how we come at you no matter how we come at you you're gonna reject me yeah and 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 he talked about you know of course uh john coming with him to those strict lifestyle that he had and he said he was he had a devil and then jesus comes and he almost uh you know, like he been, you know, like they do and they said that he was a gluttonous man and all of Right. So either way, they sought to be credit, whatever it was that these guys were trying to share with them. Exactly. So when people don't want to see Jesus, they'll find a way not to hear what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. A lot of cases, so too, a lot of cases I've seen the people, Chris, a lot of cases the people try to, they, they want to discredit you as if they're, they, they, they elevate themselves. But the problem is that the Lord is trying to put everybody into heaven, not trying to keep you out of heaven. He came to, he came to save the world, you know? How much adjustments do we make in order to accommodate other people? And I, I look at uh, what Paul said. He said he had been, uh, if eating meat causes his brother to stumble, was that Paul? He said eating meat causes his brother to stumble, then he would never eat anymore. But I... I, I I'm not sure if that's the same thing that Jesus was trying to remember. There's this extent that we make adjustments to accommodate people's lack of growth. Like if they're, they're young in the faith or something like that. Right. But then we don't go overboard to try to meet what their standard is. We focus our attention more so on what Jesus' standard is. Because we're disciples of Christ. We need to represent him. Not what they think we should be, but who he really is. Who he really is, and to me, he was just a normal. He was a he was a normal person because that's why you know what y'all got to think about this. Check out this elder. He came from heaven, and he had to come in likeness of sinful flesh, so that we can recognize and deal and touch him, and so he can understand what we go through. Yeah, it, 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 it has his disciples have an example of, of how, of how we're supposed to behave. Exactly. You know, we see in him what our behavior should be. Exactly. In other words, he said, I'm not going to try to, he's, what he said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Yes. 
that's Chris, that's what he's trying to say. We the ones that try to put all these these these, these big old hard to meet expectations so we can glorify in our own flesh. And I'm saying is not only the people in the church, but I'm talking about the people outside the church have the same image. They got that gospel. Hey, yeah. Brother Jackson, they got that gospel of how we're supposed to be. Yeah. They got the gospel of how we're supposed to, Chris, uh, you know, you're supposed to put it we'll be in this box. Because we got that gospel. Yes, we may not we may we we may not have got everything else, but we got this gospel. Put you in this box. And, and therefore, now I want you to stay in that box. But if you want to play with me, you gotta come out of that box. Because that's how I can you can I can only receive you that way. But God is saying is that that's why I like that scripture, Chris. It's just showing is wisdom is justified. In itself, because it doesn't matter which way you come, if they're gonna reject you, they're gonna reject you anyway. But as God is trying to tell you, as far as a believer, you just need to go ahead and just believe in Christ and grow in Christ, and 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 transformation comes because of Him, not because of people. Amen. Now, so a lot of people, a lot of people can, you know, a lot of people sit there and think that a lot of people are not going to heaven. I want y'all to read chapter, let's turn to Revelation chapter 7. I got it on the slide, but just in case you, you want to turn to it, it's Revelation chapter 7, starting at verse 13 to 17. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. And it says right here, and one of the, ask, one of the elders, there you go, jo Elder Johnson, one of the elders <laughs> answered, Said unto him, said unto him, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And, and John said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto them, unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and had washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, serving him day and night in the temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them into living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away their tears. What I, what I failed to do, and I'm going to put it right here, Chris, the chapter, go back to that same chapter, I meant to read up a little bit more. Let me see if I can do it. <clears throat> chapter 7 is a, is, a couple, is a couple verses before that. Chapter 7, it says here, verse 9, excuse me. Y'all ready? Verse 9, Chris, says this. I just read you what John was asked who those people were, right? Elder, this is what they said in verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, Chris, which no man can number. Now, that, that, that tells me, Chris, that's a lot of people. Right? It said, and no man can number of all nations and kindred, and people and tongues stood before the throne. Now, where's the throne at, y'all? Chris, where's the throne at? It's called heaven. <laughs> the throne and before the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? That, I think that's Jesus, right? With right. clothes with white robes. And palms in their hands, and cry with a loud voice, saying, "Salvation to our God, who sit us upon the throne, and unto the Lamb." And all the angels stood around about the throne. I think angels in heaven too, right? And about the elders. There you go, Elder Johnson. I didn't say that was you, but I'm saying there's some elders right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the four beasts 
and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. The key to it is, Brother Jackson, that's a large number of people that you can't even number. That's right. That's going before the throne of God, Chris. And yet some people want to sit there and try to tell that these people, the people there's little as a small, small multitude going to heaven, when in reality, the big group is going to heaven. Is what I'm trying to say. And, and that, sure. that's why I was reading that scripture because I'm saying is that's what he wants us to understand. It's the heaven is not being exclusive, heaven is being inclusive. Let me change this slide one second here, swap it. So so when people sit there and, and feel like they, they're pushing you out, I'm trying to tell you God is trying to push everybody in. All right. Amen. So that's a number that can't number. Now, the scripture next is <coughs> that uh, I want to turn to is in math the parable about the wedding. Now, Chris, I do you remember okay. us talking about the wedding before? Yeah, it's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> it was <one> like <laughs> it's been a while. Let me see if I got all of them in here because I think I missed one. <laughs> I'm going to go to uh, Matthew. Where is that wedding at? I'm going to Matthew 22. Okay. I'm going to take it off the slide because I, I missed a piece on it. <laughs> I'm working on this boy now. You know, you, make, you get all discombobulated sometimes. Matthew 22. And it's verse 1. And I'm going to read it. I'll read it because I know it's hard to read that one. Elder John, this is for some people here. It says right here. And Jesus answered, spake unto them again by a parable and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. Now he's trying to say the kingdom of heaven now. That's what everybody, that's what everybody trying to get to. And you get to about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Which had made a marriage for his son. That, that's Jesus. Alright? Right. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And look at this. They would not come. Again he sent forth other servants and said, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things are ready come to the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnants took his servants and treated them spitefully and slew them. Now, mm -hmm. I want you to know that servant deals with prophets. And I'm telling you, saints, <laughs> believers. It's crazy. If they don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it. And in some cases, they kill kill, kill people. Mm -hmm. And verse 7, And when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and sent forth his army, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their cities. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bitten were not worthy. Go you therefore into the what? The highways? Hey, hey, I'm on the highway. Some of the ones, some of the ones think I'm on the highway to hell. They say, I'm on the highway to hell. Jesus said, go out there the highways. That's it. Come on now. And, and, and as many, and look at this now, y'all. As many as you find, bid to the wedding. So those mm -hmm. servants went out into the highways and gathered together all. Look at that. As many as they found. Now, 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 Chris, you, you want to catch that? What's that last? Can you see that at all? Yes, sir. What, what, what's that? After I just said, as many as they can be found. What, what comes after that? That's verse uh, 10. Okay, verse 10. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found. 
both bad what? and good. Both <laughs> bad and good. Hey, 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 bro, Jackson, did you catch that? I did. I did. <laughs> both bad yeah. and good. I think that's yeah. what that's what I'm trying to say. Look, when they when they when they see you in the getting the hot wings, Chris, when they see you getting the beer, mm -hmm. just say, look, he yeah. he, he invited me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. Now, now, whether you want to call yes, me sir. good or whether you want to call me bad, I've been invited to yeah, the wedding. Man. I've been invited to the wedding, and 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 I think that's what yes, people sir. that's what people mess up. Because they trying to sit there in the box, Chris. All in the box. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All in the yeah, box, like Brother they, Jackson. <laughs> they, they want everybody to stay in the box, but at the same time, Jesus trying to, like I said, this, this king wanted to expand his box. Come on. He wanted more people to come in. Come on. And that's what this is all about. Come on. If I expand my box, I got to take you as you are. As you Amen. are. Amen. <laughs> Y'all got to get this there because I think people need to know that because most people, the church, and I, and I said when I did my last video, some people in the church are so busy trying to kick them out that because that, that, they don't like where you are, they, they, you ain't do everything they want you to do, Elder Johnson. And I'm saying is that that's not right. Because to me, it's like if you got them in the church, you don't want to run them out of the church. You want to sit there and help them grow. You, right. you you want them to, to believe and, and, and grow and see the mercy. Matter of fact, we got to show the same grace that Jesus gave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that means that, yeah. That, huh? Go ahead. I was going to say, when you say that, um, I mean, that's a profound statement because, again, while we were his enemies, he did these things. Come on. So when you say show the same you know, grace and, 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 and be as Jesus, you know, I mean, he is the example. He is the example. We're supposed to talk with, uh, you know, every day. Yes, sir. So, you know, that's, so I don't care what your situation, your scenario, how foul your language is, you know, where you're coming from, what door you just came out, <laughs> I don't care. He don't. Hey, you know, I'm just, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, and I appreciate you, you putting this out there like that because, it, it again, you know, even though we hear it, a lot of times it's just academic, right? Yeah, yeah. But internalizing it spiritually, it says a whole lot more as to how, you know, I can approach someone immediately. Immediately. Fact. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. That's, and that's what you're trying to say. Is that, and, I think, and I think the fear some of them have is they worried about them going back to where, where, they, where they came from, not understanding a lot of cases, they, they, they never left. <laughs> when they, mm -hmm. they never left, but he told you to go out to the highway where where they at, <laughs> so that they can, mm -hmm. so you can bring them in, so they can grow. You give them elder, you give them milk first, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you do. If they come in as a babe, you let them come in and give them milk. And you gotta understand if they if you're giving them milk, they may be they they're not super saints; they're just saints. Amen. And then if, if, if they're going to grow, I think they're concerned about the fact that those who have, who have matured to that level, Chris, where they mature to the point is that I just don't want the beer anymore. I don't want to dance anymore. I don't want to have the club anymore. That's up to them. Right. If that's what they feel God has led them to be, that's okay. But God is that's not right. telling you to ostracize somebody who, who's still where they are. 